So I wanted to talk a bit about symptoms and how symptoms affect me and that kind of thing. And one of the things that tends to affect me is temperature issues. Um, I don't know about other people living with mast cell activation or POTS for that matter. I just know about myself and the things that I go through and that's a big reason why I started this channel is to kind of like share what I'm going through to see if other people can relate to it. And if so, awesome, but also I'm sorry because it sucks. Uh, but just kind of putting it out there because it's a good way of like screaming into the endless void that is the internet in a way without the actual screaming part. So with my reactions to things, I've started to notice this odd trend of getting low body temperature. So it usually starts with my hands getting really cold and I'm like, wait, my hands are cold, but then my head will start to feel like it's super hot for some reason. But when I take my temperature, it's like 93.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, which I don't know what that is in Celsius right now. I do have two thermometers, one in Celsius and one in Fahrenheit, just for the purpose of taking it with both. Uh, but I have been taking it with the Fahrenheit one as of late. And uh, yeah, I have multiple, multiple thermometers. So having low body temperature um, has been an issue. 93 is probably the lowest that I've had it go. Um, sometimes I'll be around like 95. Uh, I do tend to get in a really hot shower when that kind of stuff happens and I stay in there until my head stops feeling like it's on fire even though it's technically like really cold. It's really hard to explain like I've explained it to um, doctors before, I've explained it to paramedics like it is a very odd sensation because it feels like I have a fever or I think I have a fever but then it turns out I have low body temperature. So. I would definitely encourage anyone who's feeling like you have a fever to take your temperature, obviously, and also see if it's low or if it's high, right? Because that's kind of a, an important thing to have as, you know, evidence to submit to your doctor and also just to keep track of your own body temperature is also a good thing. Um, my like regular body temperature, I think, is around like 97, 96-ish, like in that realm. So when it is lower than that, obviously it's concerning because of hypothermic temperatures being an issue. And I have had medical personnel, doctors, paramedics, etc., tell me that if it does go down and it doesn't go back up, I need to go to the ER. I am not a doctor. I am not a medical practitioner. I am someone who lives with complex and rare illnesses. And I do talk about my experience here on the internet. Please do not take anything I say as medical advice because that's not what it's here for. It is here for like the sharing and caring info session-ish kind of thing. So, when I get the low body temperature, that is what I do. I tend to blast myself with hot water. I wrap myself in a bunch of blankets. I make sure I've blow dried my hair completely dry after the shower so that I don't get any colder. And I sit in front of heaters. Now, if my body temperature doesn't happen to rectify itself, that's when I would have to go to the ER. I have been relatively lucky though that my body temperature has stabilized by doing that. And I have talked to someone else in the past who has a similar issue with their body temperature having it drop and then they get in a shower, get in a hot bath, it's the only way they can get warm, and then they get out and they seem to get better. So it's an interesting and odd thing because I have had it happening for so long, I thought I was getting messed up fever, migraine kind of things, um, but it's turning out to be low body temperature. So I haven't actually taken my blood pressure at the same time, so I think that's something I'm going to start to do just to see um, if my blood pressure is correlating with that at all, if there's like a downward trend of my blood pressure at the time. I definitely feel like crap when it happens, um, but it is something that now that I feel like I can put a name to it, it's low body temperature, it doesn't tend to freak me out as much, um, but it is something I am definitely keeping an eye on as it is happening more frequently than before which is also odd. I do also suffer from night sweats, which is something, I don't know if I've actually talked about that on here before, but they are a pain in the butt because I will wake up, I will be completely soaked from sweating, and then I'll either have to change all of my clothes or all of my bedding halfway through the night because it's so moist that I can't sleep. So that's also not fun. But who knows what that is actually from because the doctors can't figure it out and it wouldn't surprise me if I'm like going into that perimenopausal stage just because of someone like myself living with a whole bunch of really rare and complex illnesses um, and having had cancer and radiation treatment. 
uh, it is in the realms of possibility. Like I said, not a doctor, but my body's doing some weird stuff sometimes and I tend to pay attention to that. So I do talk to my practitioners about all that kind of stuff. And I do also know that women who are perimenopausal are they tend to be dismissed by doctors because, oh, you're too young or this or that or whatever. So I have talked to other women who are experiencing similar things and that is what has led me to the conclusions about that. Is it a topic of conversation I want to delve into tons right now? Probably not. Speaking of getting cold, I'm getting there myself. So I'm probably going to end this one. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually post this or not, but if I do, uh, I hope that it made sense because I feel like I'm getting a little confused and brain foggy because I'm starting to get really cold. So I'm going to head off here and go warm up. Take it easy. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.